Hi there, this is Alfred Lyon, and I'm outside of the shop today just doing like a little blog or video blog or I don't know what you call them nowadays, but at any rate, uh, the reason is because lately on my posts and for a long time, uh, people would look at the tools and then make a comment like, uh, well, I hope they're cutting something soft uh, because there's only two flutes or what have you, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, what part material are they cutting, you know, with, with something that looks like that, you know? And these are valid questions, you know, people are always interested in that because uh, they know what they cut and, and uh, so they're kind of, you know, when we look at something, I think we always kind of say, uh, what would I use, how would I use that, you know? Um, but anyway, I just kind of wanted to go over a little bit about uh, flute quantities, I guess, more than anything else. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that happens when people order uh, cutting tools from us is they uh, the, they leave out what their part material is. And uh, so if it's directly from the customer, the, the order, we can go back to the customer and say, hey, uh, you know, we'd like to quote this. Uh, what part material are, are you cutting? You know, what's your part material? And uh, most of the time they, they, they'll just tell us. Uh, um, but then if it's a... Uh, an order from a distributor or, or a rep or something like that, uh, a lot of times they don't want to go back to the customer and ask them, you know. So it's really important that uh, anytime you uh, place an order with us or with your rep or distributor or with another company, you let them know, hey, I'm cutting 6061 aluminum or I'm cutting uh, stainless steel 304, 303 or whatever, you know, steel 1018, you know, something like that, you know. So that way uh, we can design a better tool for you uh, without having to go kind of uh, back and forth, you know. So that, that's one key thing to get you the, the cutter that, that works best for you. Um, the next thing is a lot of times with special form tools, which are always going to be just a little bit different or maybe a lot a bit different than uh, um, end mills and whatnot. Uh, and the reason is, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, I'll, take, I'll go back a little bit. When I was starting, uh, if you if you were cutting something soft like aluminum, you, you you'd use a two flute or a three flute. If you're cutting something hard, you like uh, I don't know M2 or something like that. You're gonna you want a ten flute or you know you want a bunch of flutes in there because the, the rule of thumb used to be uh, you always want two flutes in the cut at the same time. Um, so basically, you know, with the higher surface speed, you're rotating the tool faster, so you can have less flutes because there's going to be two flutes in the in the material because it's moving faster. Lower surface speed takes longer for the flutes to get there, so you want more flutes so you can have two flutes in the cut at the same time. Um, but now with high-speed machining and chip thinning and, and uh, a constant load, uh, that kind of thing is kind of not as uh, as standard, you know. Um, you get better, uh, you get less chatter and whatnot if, 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 the, if the chip load is always the same, um, uh, but if the harmonics are right. so. So, you know, for regular machining, uh, this is kind of old school for sure. But for uh, form tools and tools where you're, where you're basically you're just finishing, um, then, you know, then it's kind of not only dictated, dictated by the material you're cutting, but also dictated by your profile and dictated by the amount of room you have to create that profile. Uh, that being said, this most recent one here, this little guy here, uh, so this is a four flute tool, but it's alternating, so in effect, it's two flute tool, okay? So, uh, you know, it, you might say, oh, well, that's only going to be good in something soft, like like aluminum, brass, or even wood. Uh, this wouldn't cut wood, by the way. The rake is not good for it. I mean, it would cut it, but it wouldn't burn like crazy. Um, so, uh, that being said, there's reasons why. Why is it alternating like this? This particular cutter, let's see if I've got a pencil here, uh, has not only does it have uh, radii on, on all four corners of both set rows of uh, slots, but also has little topping radii down here on each, on, in, on the inside here and on the back here. I don't know if I'm pointing that right, but it does. So it kind of looks something like this here. So one of the main reasons why we couldn't put it all on one flute, this flute and that, is because of the channel in the middle. So you got this guy here, if you're using, say so you're using what we call a gash wheel or a dish wheel, and it's coming around. When it gets into here, it's gonna wipe this flute out. So even if, you know, you can design 
Uh, the gap there is uh, 87 thousandths or something like that. So uh, yeah, you could get a thinner wheel, but then it's going to flex. So it's not really good for that. So that wheel is going to hit that. So th in this case, that's why alternating is the way to go. Now, when you're finishing, you're probably not removing that much material anyway. So, you know, uh, because the chip load's lower, you can you can feed faster, you can uh, increase the surface speed, and uh, you know a lot of things can happen. And you're not you can make it through something harder with something that you may not think you could use uh, in, in other situations. So other times we get tools where they're cutting something really hard and they want a whole bunch of flutes. Uh, so here's the limitations on a whole bunch of flutes. So say you got a tool like this, okay? So it's got six flutes and it's a full radius cutter and it cuts all the way from the end of the tool all the way to the neck. So you say, oh, well, big deal, what's the problem there? You can get all that on there. And this is a scrap tool, by the way. So if, you're, if, if you can see the primaries and everything kind of funny looking, that's because it's a setup piece. So I don't know if I can explain this right. But basically, if this was done with a wheel like this, um, say to get this, this relief here, okay? So that's radial relief. And then it also has to have axial relief. So you got radial relief that's creating the relief like this. Then you have axial relief that's creating the wheel, if I can tilt it right, where the wheel's like that and like that. And so the axial relief combined with the radial relief is where you run into problems. And here's where I probably can't show you, but basically what you got is you're grinding this flute and you're hitting this one. So that's how, that's the issue there. So we might suggest, oh, well, if you want proper relief, then you need to uh, go to four flutes. And then they'll say, oh, but we're cutting, some, cutting something really, really hard. So we'll say, okay, we can give you six flutes, but we're going to have to reduce the axial and radial relief, and the, cool, the tool will not cut or perform as well as it should. It will cut. It may not last as long, uh, but, uh, you know, we do what the customer wants whenever we can. In this situation, I was able to get just enough relief uh, for it to actually cut and clear. And, you know, they buy them all the time, so that must mean it's working or they don't have any option. That's the other side of that. You know, some people, they ask me, oh, you know, that'll never work or whatever like that. And, and maybe it doesn't work that great. You know, maybe it's the only option available to the customer, uh, you know, whether it's because our lead time is so fantastic or just because they don't want to bother. They got something that works, whether it's perfect or not. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, that's all I really want to talk about. I know it's a kind of a long video just sitting here talking, staring at me. Um, except for when you're looking at these little guys, these tiny little guys here, which this is actually pretty big. This is a one eighth shank. But anyway, uh, a lot of times people ask for dovetails like this with four flutes, stuff like that. Uh, you know, a lot of companies can make little guys like that with a whole bunch of flutes. But like I s said before, they don't have the right relief. So sometimes it's better to have less flutes with the proper geometry, cu cutting geometry. At any rate, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them, in, leave them down below. And uh, if you have any other ideas that you want me to talk about or maybe get back in the shop and show you, please let me know. Okay, see you next time.